Pdi holder. I've been holding Pdi for a while. Um, I've been involved in crypto since 2015. I got, um, I got I got into Bitcoin when it was about $120. I've been through multiple bull markets, bear markets. I am I invest and trade in multiple ecosystems. I'm not a maximalist of anything. Um, I'm very heavy in the Richard Hart ecosystem this cycle. Um, but I'm yeah I, I'm I'm chain agnostic. And um, I'm not. I'm not here to really debate. I'm. I'm more here to like hear what you guys have to say because, like I said, I hold PDI, and I think it can go to a dollar. I think it can go beyond a dollar. Like I look at it as a meme coin that has a narrative behind it that I think is quite powerful. Um, and I've never debated the fact that it could go to a dollar or beyond. Um, I just really don't understand how it can peg to a dollar and how that mechanism would work and how it would be collateralized how the debt would be collateralized if you're looking <clears throat> looking at p die the same way as your um die the the die stable coin an algorithmic stable coin um i i just don't know or understand how it could be collateralized who would collateralize it and how the mechanism would work and I have asked people within the eco, uh, the like the Atropa community, and I haven't really had an answer that makes any sense to me. Um, most of the answers are "trust me, bro," and they're going to collateralize it with the Atropa coins in the ecosystem, which is like ridiculous. That so that's not how that that's not how it would work if it would work. And I I just I I'm definitely open to hearing. Um, some educated people in, in this space um, explain to me the, the mechanics behind it and, and why you think it will peg and how you think it will peg um, and uh, like you know if, if you can change my mind on it that's great because I'll probably hold my P die longer um, so that's why I'm here um, I, I want to hear from you guys um, in the ecosystem and um, hopefully learn something so that's a little introduction there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. H happy to answer that. I mean, that's a, I think I got a pretty good answer. I mean, we can, we can get right into it, but um, let me introduce Zach here really quick. Zach, uh, Zach is part of the, you know, he's one of the big Atropa guys, early P die holder as well. And he's just kind of been helping lead the charge and he's definitely more tapped into the Atropa ecosystem. And I think that, that we would both agree that, a trope, uh, I mean, it's not going to replace Maker or, or anything like that. I mean, that's that's pretty much the case. It's probably going to have some cool stuff going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, Zach, why don't why don't you chime in on that? Because you're you're the Atropa guy, and I can kind of talk about some of the Maker mechanisms uh, and really interesting things that we found uh, after that. Oh, okay. Well, maybe. Zach is having issues with the mic. I don't know what's going on. He's in Thailand right now, so I don't know if they've got spotty connection or anything. Zach, feel free to chime in <clears throat> whenever you get a chance. But yeah, I, my belief with the Tropa is is that it's definitely not connected. Uh, well, it's it's not directly going to replace anything or anything like that. Uh, I'm not as tapped in on a Tropa, right? We've actually got Freedom here. Freedom is also really tapped into a Tropa. Uh, and he, you know, but I'm actually going to send him the invite. He'll come and speak every now and then. If he wants to come on up, he can, uh, I'm sure he can answer. If anybody wants to come and speak on a trope a little bit more, be my guest. Um, but I'll just kind of tell a little bit of my story. So if there's anybody new who, ha who hasn't heard me or anything, um, I'm new. I'm a new day one Pulsican, basically. And I was here specifically for the pump and dump. That was it. Didn't know anything other than, honestly, I didn't like Richard Hart. But I knew he made moves, and so I was like, that's what I'm here for, just the pump and dump. So then I, ca I, I came, and it was super explosive for a little bit. And during that little period, I started following Sami, kind of started figuring things out. Um, and and it, was, it took me a little while, but then, then and I started listening to people like, oh, Richard Hart's a genius, you know, 5D five, five chess, you know, like he's 20,000 steps ahead. All of these, these, these things, and so I'm like, oh, something's, you know, I mean, this guy's got to have some sort of game plan to, you know, redo a hex thing, you know, genius marketer, all these things, and so, but I, I didn't know, right? And um, 
but then I figured out the copies and then, and then, so then I was like, Oh, okay. I, I get it now. Like, this is different. I've never seen anything like this. Like, I don't really get excited about crypto anymore. I mean, I've been in it for a long time, but this, the copy ecosystem personally for me made me really, really excited. I didn't even know that it was a antichrist, you know, sacrilegious thing within the hex community. I was just a noob, right? So I kind of start, you know, networking in the telegrams and stuff and just realized very quickly that it was like not the thing. It was really, really weird, but I just thought it was odd from the very beginning, how I'm like, yo, I'm new, I really like this, like, I've never seen anything like it, and everyone's like, no, nah, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, and I'm like, oh, we got created by Julio, by the way, uh, Julio, come on up if you want to talk about your thing here in a little bit, happy to have you come chat about that, but anyways, uh, they're like, you're an idiot, and I was just like, whoa, this is crazy, and I didn't, had no idea what I was getting into, to be honest, I was just like, wow, okay, I guess they don't get it, but what ended up happening is kind of through that process, we found the Rap Bitcoin group, which was dope. Um, I think Mr. Wellington put that together. And then um, from that, we all, that was kind of like the little copy community. It was just all kind of Rap Bitcoin at that time. Uh, and, you know, we would try to go promote it and just, you know, usual hate, whatever it goes. We got Zach up coming again, so hopefully he comes on up. Um, but then the, the, you know, I was like, no, 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 I want to do these other copies and lots of other people did as well. So we actually ended up migrating to another telegram group that I created called the PRC Valhalla. And we were the ugly stepchild of Pulse Chain. I think there was about 200 people in there and everybody hated us. <laughs> um, you know, we were the, 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 the stupid meme coin guys that were like at the bottom of everybody's comments that literally nobody cared about. Um, but we were having fun. And uh, trying to just get to the, you know, we thought something was going to be happening, right? We were like, something's going to be happening. It started with the farms. Oh, he's just going to do the farms. And then he rubbed the farms and lots of people left the group. But then uh, New2, and I wish New2 was here, he started finding some really interesting stuff about specifically p -Dye. It's really weird. So then we started digging a little bit and it was like, whoa, like, like we found transactions that were on the blockchain before anybody else uh, had access to anything. And then at some point along in this process, I don't know exactly what it was, we found Nine Iron Capital. And Nine Iron Capital had been beating the drum on PDI for like the whole time, basically. I think since July. I think this, this started in September or late August and he was about two months ahead of everybody else. And he was like, yo, like, this is crazy. And he had lots of transaction data. I mean, it's all in tweets. We, we can definitely go find it here. Uh, and, and it was, to us, it was obvious at that time. But we're the, we're the tinfoil hat nut jobs, right? So we were like, oh, my gosh, this is it. Our whole group went nuts. You know, and, of course, we kind of found it. We bought it up before everybody else. Full transparency, right? I mean, everybody knows that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. But we were the ones that were digging as everybody else made fun of us. So that's, that's kind of how it goes. But anyways, uh, we made the tweet. Uh, the, the original theory of everything, we got the verse in here. That's, that's what he dubbed it, where we just discovered our PDI transactions. And I did in that, that tweet make a lot of assumptions, but I did try to say, hey, this is why I'm making assumptions. And really, at that point, it was nowhere near what it is now. Um, honestly, it, like we, we, I don't want to say we lucked out. We, we always tried to be transparent that we don't know, like, hey, this is just a theory. Um, and, and then as things grew, it started to become more of like, whoa, this actually might be more serious. And I'm happy to, to kind of get in, into that with you, but had no idea that it was going to be a war, right? I'm just, we thought it was going to be, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Richard Hart's a genius. Like what, a, what, a, what a G, but it was like, it was definitely not that like, and I had to learn that Hexaco has a different risk tolerance, different investment metrics. I mean, I'm coming from Binance smart chain from back in the old day. I mean, I did other stuff as well. And, and, but I, I know the mean, mind right and i was like no no once the mean people figure this out they're going to love this it's basically resetting the clock back on eth today to whatever today zero which is nuts and so um anyways they uh um where am i going with that so anyways there was a total war it was crazy um and then shout out to nine iron he just kept dropping alpha like i mean this guy's been following wallets along with new two since July. He's got them all marked up in D bank with like paid accounts and everything. And like when transactions happen and stuff, 
they're they're on it. Um, and it hasn't been perfect, um, but a lot of it has been really, really telling. And, and for example, I'll just give one big one right now, and this is my favorite one to say, is somebody has deposited basically five, what is it? Is it yeah, two billion USDC into the pol or into the Pulse Maker Vaults, which is absurd, which is way higher than the USDC amount. These are not minting transactions. I can go pull up everything. I'll put them up on the Jumbotron here in a little bit. It's not, you know, you can see the contract interactions, but these are deposits just straight up. Somebody deposited two billion. At the time when they did that, that two billion was probably like worth, I don't know, a million dollars. Now it's worth uh, $5 million. Um, and so um, that it, essentially what we've kind of started to realize is it's actually, you don't need to, the, the supply of PDI is 22 billion, I believe. So to re-collateralize that with Pulse Maker, you would need about 33 billion, 34 billion, something like that. Well, it's really interesting. If you start putting money in there at low prices and everything appreciates, wrap Bitcoin, you've got, we've already seen USDC is going up with everything. Somebody can do that, right? It's not unrealistic. We can definitely say that, right? Uh, would somebody have the motivations to do that? I mean, we can talk about that and debate about all of those things. Um, but the fact that somebody has deposited, which, and this is like way, way more, like the amount of PUSDC as far as like token amounts is way, way more than what the USDC amount is. So that's indicating that whoever is doing this, and it's already met the debt ceiling and, and, and all of those things, um, but it's, it, it's, they're potentially getting ready for people to start using those vaults. Because really, in order to kickstart the process, all they need is those vaults, wherever they are. We found a few um, and, and happy to get more on it, right? Uh, happy to get more people uh, looking. That's, that's what we've always said, is we just want an army of people researching, looking at this stuff, because the more eyes, the merrier. Um, and so... That uh, let's see here. Sorry, I got a request. Let me let me just come back here. The uh, the, the more eyes, the merrier uh, as far as researching. But essentially, all you need to do is recollateralize it 1.5x the market cap of PDI. And right now, at these levels, it's realistic. And especially if we see some blood, it's even more realistic. So you know, there's some really, and and when the last time those deposits were made, it's it is when PUSDC was at its lows. Um, so we can also, you know, Nine Iron has also discovered that those wallets are connected to you know wallets that were moving money around the chain before everybody else was. So just really, really interesting stuff. Again, happy to put that stuff up there. But over time, it's grown, and, and the main thing is, is somebody is re-collateralizing those Pulse Maker vaults. You, you know, maybe there's an ulterior motive. I mean, we, we don't know. But it's really, really interesting uh, because that's a pretty fat bag that somebody put in there. So that's kind of where we're at. And then we got Teddy Bear. Come on down. So anyways, um, what, what, what's going on, Zach? Can you hear us now? <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm sorry. My internet was giving me some problems this morning, but uh, yeah, I'm here. Awesome, dude. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well, man. Um, just been trying to lay low a bit. You know, the market's been a little funky lately, so I kind of just try to stay away from the computer as much as I can and be outside. <clears throat> but yeah, no, things are going pretty well here in Thailand so far. Um, definitely enjoying it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to hop into space. I thought it was going to happen at 10 o'clock Eastern time but I had made a mistake in my calculations. Um, it happened an hour earlier, I guess, but I'm glad that I saw it this morning and jumped in. Awesome. Yeah, dude. Glad, glad you made it. Zach is, uh, yeah, he wakes up when we, we do these spaces. Uh, I also do want to give a shout out to Sonny. He's down in the chat. Uh, feel free to come up and, and uh, chat with us if he wants. Sonny has built some just super cool tech for a lot of these copies, right? So he actually built a really gangster reflections token called USDCR that rewards in PUSDC. And he sent a, a good chunk of the supply to the Pulse Maker vaults. So uh, you're seeing a lot of, you know, small little transactions go in there. Of course, it's nowhere near the five, five million, um, but it, it's something, right? We've got people that are, that are working on this. 
Uh, I'm also going to be working on a initiative to uh, create some really, really fun stuff to buy and burn PDI, and then also liquidity. So um, just, you know, fun stuff. Community is building things. And then we also do anticipate that there's things that we don't know. We've, we've got people that are building front ends to be able to actually make transactions within the DAP, right? So those are things that are happening. People, if the supply and, and, and the ratios on PDI and PUSDC gets wonky enough, people can go in there and arbitrage and we, we have somebody making a front end. So lots of, lots of cool stuff is going on. The community's working on it and we do expect that there's going to be something from from a higher up or somebody like the person who's donating this five million dollars uh somebody's going to have a bigger hand but what's up zach i just had a question i guess um just because like i'm not like super super familiar with how the maker dow works um if these vaults are collateralized and we have this new front end that somebody's making um wouldn't like the minting and burning functions of the die have to be operational again? Because I don't, I don't think those are working right now, right? Well, I'm not super versed on it. We need a code guy. We have one of our, our code guys. I have a tweet from him at somebody to come up and tell us that. But it would, I believe it's something to do with the debt ceiling, right? So something to do with with how how the ratios are and if there's just too much uh, of a certain token in there, then it won't necessarily work, right? So, but again, the interesting thing is that somebody deposited it, right? So this, a lot of these, the debt ceiling was reached not because people were buying, I mean, a lot of people at the beginning were minting and burning and arbitraging PDI and USDC. They were having a lot of FUD, of FUD and FUDing us with that and that was the whole thing. But um, the deposit part of it is the really, really interesting part. So somebody had a vested interest in protecting PDI so it could no longer arbitrage. What's going on, Penos? What's your question? Yeah, so I, I, I looked into um, the the maker vaults and I, I see that there were deposits being made and I do find that very interesting but I'm, I'm assuming you understand how DAI stablecoin um, works, the, the, like the mechanism, the collateralization mechanism behind it that stabilizes the dollar. So my, my the biggest question I have is depositing in the vaults is one thing, right? Like anyone that had, you know, millions of dollars of USDC got those copies and can deposit those into the vaults. But how would that it be stabilized and pegged to a dollar when the, I mean, a big part of how um, algorithmic stable coins work like DAI is the collateralized debt with the loans, you know, they people deposit ETH into the vaults and, and borrow the DAI and it's, it's over collateralized. And that is a big part of how, it stabilizes and pegs to a dollar. So m my question is, how would that work with something like PDI? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So yes, yeah, I do, I do understand those vaults are there, and there's all sorts of crazy stuff. So like, like I've tried to do research on all of the intricacies. It's very, very complex. There are more people that understand it better than me. Can hundred percent say that? Uh, and and if anybody can please please come on up but that's kind of the purpose of them needing to be re-collateralized beforehand right because right now it's a meme right 100 percent at this moment it none of that works because i i don't think the vaults are re-collateralized uh, something and there was also we saw votes that took place as well on the pulse chain side so early on in the process one of the things that kind of lit fuel to the fire is we saw a uh, a million dollar tornado cash payment and then shortly after that, there was a, a vote on the Pulse Maker DAO contract. We don't know what it was. And then also shortly after that, the USDC started coming in. And then shortly after that, um, the, the, debt, the debt ceiling was reached. So it was um, something's going on, right? Well, at least in our mind, right? So, but the functions work. That's the thing. The functions work, the wallets work. The, the whole point of the, the copy, and that's our belief with this copy ecosystem, and that's why I think it's so beautiful, is the functions of the ETH contracts work. So it would take somebody to come in. In order for this magic to start happening, it would take somebody to, to basically 
come in and re-collateralize it with enough money on their own for at that point it to be 1.5x. And then there's, you know, also we've seen stuff with SDI. The really another interesting thing that I love is Pulse Chain was forked literally the day after Spark was launched on ETH, right? Which is a, a way to basically, it's SDI, you turn your DAI into SDI and then you start earning yield. And um, I, I looked it up a while ago, I had it in my head pretty good back then. But another really, really interesting thing, Nine Iron has also recently found some interactions with that contract also before the chain was going on before any of us had access to it so you know and again how it all works i'm not a coder right i how right i'm not detailed enough to answer those types of things but i can put the building blocks together you know to kind of get the idea take somebody to re-collateralize it over collateralize it on their own then potentially if we have S die and people can start earning yield, well, then we've got a, a minting and burning pool that is available so you don't have to market sale. You've got, you know, potentially farms that could come in, uh, which could increase the liquidity to beef things up and also really, really boost up the price. And then you could also have um, the S die, which is just, hey, let's just swap it for S die. And then you start, you know, earning yield um, just, you know, just from holding essentially. It's kind of like a reflections token they I, I think you have to stake the s time again I, I don't know but with s die you can earn the yield and everything that's being encompassed from within the system so lots of things that 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 could happen again a lot of these are still still theories and then another interesting thing is one of the things that you can do with p maker is you can vote on what assets can be used to re-collateralize the vaults so, I mean, if that was to happen here, we would have may easily have things like uh, Hex, we would have Pulse, we would probably have Pulse X, who knows, maybe even Ink, give Ink a really interesting use case. So, you know, there's just, again, we're theorizing a lot. I always like to say that, but our theories, you know, used to be a lot, you know, a lot, lot more fringe and, and they, were, they were a lot more loose. And, and as, as it's grown, We've been right. You know, we found out we've been more right, more right, more right. We found more and more things have happened, like those USDC deposits. So at some point, um, you know, um, we expect more, right? And, and again, we're probably no expectations, right? That's another thing. This is us, right? This is us saying all of this. You know, nobody else is, um, you know, a lot of people have disagreed. <clears throat> but the unknown right that's kind of you know we're speculating on the unknown that's that's kind of what we do here in crypto and uh yeah so that's kind of kind of what we're thinking so basically it sounds like you really just uh the after the collateralization we kind of need this like front end to be up and working so that people can be exchanging and um you know collateralizing their different assets receiving die hopefully if it can all work out like that but yeah this is pretty interesting stuff I'm, I'm where's gold key at that's what i'm wondering you guys like what the hell's going on here i thought we were coming into a debate yeah he uh he didn't didn't want to come so um it's all good he's doing gopher i wish him the best on gophers 100 percent so you know all good Gophers. i'm done with the drama <laughs> for sure man yeah it's been it's been a crazy couple weeks and as as the you know what, what are your thoughts to all that what, what do you think to everything that i just kind of said that potential roadmap to how this could happen and then let me also just say this here too you know, these are things that we believe would blow Pulse Chain up at large, right? Once people start figuring it out, like, oh, wow, you know, and what a, what a better way to use the funds, in our opinion, than to create a stable coin, you know, basic, you know, from thin air out of nothing and also a super hype marketing event that really highlights the beauty of this chain. So, again, it's just, it seems to us that this is, it's, it makes a lot of sense, makes too much sense. But what are your what are your thoughts? I mean, you're you're a little bit of an outsider. Yeah, I mean, I'm an, I'm an outsider in the sense that I I don't really subscribe to the pegging aspects of it all. But I'm invested in Papi I'm invested in a tropa. I 
I've been in Pulse Chain since day one. I was in Hex very early, um, many years ago. I got a lot of people into Hex. Um, and, you know, everything you said, like, I, I, it's not anything that I don't already know about the deposits and, and things like that. But, um, again, just the, the, the part that I'm, I'm yet to understand and no one's explained this to me, and that for me to believe that PDI could peg to a dollar, um, I really need to understand how it the mechanism would work to keep it stable. Because, I mean, ha first of all, how much m like money, USD value, would you need, first of all, to get, um, get DAI to a dollar? I think you mentioned it earlier, but can, can you just tell me again how much USD? Yeah, value is so it's not just USDC, right? So the vaults right now on, on, on Pulse Maker, I think they're, they're 1.5x collateralized. Right. To, so, so I, I count on, on ETH. Right. The 1.5x collateralized. I think like 60% of that is USDC, if I'm not mistaken. The rest of it is ETH. You know, wrap ETH, wrap Bitcoin. There's others, a couple other stable coins that they have in there, and they 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 add a few. They're getting into real world assets now, but um, it that it it's. It's a it's a variety of assets, so it's not just going to be the USDC. It's a whole a whole bunch of different things. So all of these vaults work in tandem. So as and, and those are the wallets that work on the contract. And so as long as those vaults are collateralized on Pulse Chain, then theoretically the contracts should also work because I mean it's they're pointing to the same directions. They have the same contract addresses, wallet addresses all of those things. So if somebody was to collateralize it again on their own and they load up these vaults and it's not 1.5x, you know, it doesn't have to be the full $22 billion. The interesting part about this is the USDC and then the, 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 uh, wrap Bitcoin, but you know, if this happens, those are going to go up with it. And we're, and USDC, if that also hits a dollar, well, there's 2 billion right there in the vaults right then and there. So, you know, those are the type, it, it's based on, you have to think about you deposit now when these token prices are not at their peak. And then once they rise, you start to have enough, you, you know, well, I guess you would, they would all rise in tandem, right? It would have to be enough at, at whenever they deposit the funds and then they would all rise in tandem until it pegs. That, that, that is kind of the theory. So you, you put in, you know, again, whatever these other tokens are, we, we, you know, there's, I think there's going to be rap Bitcoin. I made a post before where I, I didn't think that was going to be the case. Um, but I do think rap Bitcoin is going to, to have a part to do with it now. Um, P, P rap Bitcoin. But again, I, I think that we, we could potentially see some votes and have, you know, once it's loaded up, it, again, it, it, let's say the market cap of PDI is a hundred million dollars. Well, then these vaults would have to have $150 million, right, of, of whatever that is. And then at that point, the mousetrap can get started. People can start buying, minting, burning, whatever. But that it, it theoretically, if the math is correct on Maker, it should be a magnet up to a dollar. So that's kind of how it works. So if it gets, you know, if it starts to, you know, depeg from USDC, if it starts to, you know, sell down too much, that's what the re-collateralization would be ahead of time for whoever would want to do this. Nine Iron Capital thinks it's RH. Um, you know, I'm not going to necessarily say that, but he, like, digs in a lot more. He doesn't come to these spaces and speak. Sonny also knows a lot. Sonny provides a lot of liquidity, and, and he is really, really kind of good at understanding the math. And he was one of the first people to realize this is way bigger than just PDI. This is really the whole copy ecosystem is going to go up with this and, and that's the only way it could work not just PDI. everything else attached to it has to go up so, and so okay. if everything has to go up together to get to a dollar out of the copy stable coins you, we're, we're talking like billions of dollars hundreds of millions like it's a lot of money that that we're talking and let's just say we can these coins can get to a dollar in value again the, the the problem here is the stabilization keeping it at a dollar so it doesn't go above or doesn't go below it can variate a little bit that's that's part of the 
um, of, of of the whole mechanism on on, on the real um, uh, like on Spark and and make a DAO like people are you know if it moves a couple cent people can buy or sorry sell um, when once it drops back down people can buy and and the whole um, collateralization of the debt is like such a big part of it it's like who in like this ecosystem this community would have to be boring and depositing so much money and it just doesn't exist in this ecosystem right now that that, that kind of money i don't think exists um and and there's not enough demand for the collateralization and the mechanism to actually peg and stay stable at a dollar like that that's what i don't understand and and i i just haven't been able to you know or haven't heard any explanation from anyone that has explained that part everything else I've be, uh, has been explained to me thoroughly and i can see for myself by looking at the contracts and everything yes people are depositing yes the functions are there in in the contract in the code but the stabilization and, and the collateralization part of of it is, to me is unrealistic Right, right. Well, I mean, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I, I really don't believe so because, I mean, there's a giant sacrifice wallet and then who knows if what other god whales or people connected to Richard Hart uh, have planned. We've seen a Tropa donate over $7 million into a burned wallet, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, which is pretty crazy. So there are some people you know who do seem to be benevolent whales that we have found and again yeah it, it would be volatile right it doesn't go straight to a dollar and stay there I would, like it would go i think once if the announcements were made or if we you know find potential more information it, it could i think there will be a point where it's very volatile but if you look at regular die it was also very volatile and that took about a year to stabilize so, you know, and I would imagine this could be way, way more. We could see it go up. Oh, hey, we got Gold Key in here. Uh, hello, Gold Key. Uh, we, like, it could, it could have to touch it, you know, 30, 40, 50 times before it stabilizes. But again, the trick is, the key to the whole thing is somebody would need to deposit 1.5x the value of maker into those vaults we would also need thick liquidity in the pools uh and and that would kick things off essentially and then if people start that would allow people to burn their p die they could start doing that and then there's enough pools uh, in the pools to do that that would allow people uh to start you know they could start re-collateralizing and, and and using their own tokens uh but then adding 1.5x to the collateral pool at that point so it would not be a dollar immediately and it would be insane absolutely and there would be uh who knows what would happen um but it would again regular die took about a year and a half or so a year to stabilize and i expect this to be no difference yeah we'll go to a uh, reg regular die sorry just uh, one last thing and then i'll, I'll sharp regular die started as a stable coin every stable coin that exists whether it's you know fiat backed or algorithmic starts as a stable coin it doesn't start as how pdi started which is basically a utility token or meme coin whatever you want to call it and then goes up to a dollar and stays there like that that's never happened before every single stable coin that's, that exists from the get-go was designed with a mechanism to make it a stable coin maybe it wasn't as stable at first but you didn't it wasn't variating much or, or, or moving much from the dollar amount um there, there was some volatility like we we saw the same thing with usdl when um, liquid loans launched and they launched their stable coin and there was times when it went up to one dollar twenty there was times when it dropped down to 80 cents and there were some arbitrage opportunities there that people were taking uh, advantage of and then it what after i think two weeks it they stabilized it and it's it's pretty stable like it stays at around a dollar so it's this is different pdi is not it wasn't built to be a stable coin it, it, the, the copy is exactly that it's just a copy it's a utility token that um that exists on, on pulse chain that has functions in the background because it is a copy of a stable coin that exists on ethereum but 
it was never stable and it never started as a stable coin. So I just, I just wanted to say that. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good intro. Thank, thanks for letting me up. Um, Hoddle. Yeah. Hey, hey, okay. hey, man, hey, real quick, man, I just want to say, hey, I apologize, man, for some of the beef that we've had, man, I'm really just trying to, you know, put a lot of that stuff past a lot of us, uh, I, you know, I think you guys have done a lot of good work, uh, and, you know, I really want to focus on the good things that people have done for the ecosystem, stop call, name calling everything, you know, all that stuff, so, I mean, I really intend to be respectful up here, and I do actually appreciate you coming up here, happy to hear what you have to say, Hope you will listen to us with uh, an open mind, uh, you know, because, you know, I think all of us can agree we're better off, you know, together, however that may be. Uh, and so happy to hear your opinion. Again, thank you for coming up. Uh, and, you know, you're even welcome to, to speak about Gophers, how that's going on Solana, uh, if you would like. So how are you, sir? I'm good, man. Yeah. Um, and I, I appreciate you having me up. Um, I, I don't have a ton of time. I am focused on that launch, but um, did want to come up. And um, I do feel like you kind of got caught in some crossfire with me and B Roots. But um, I personally, the the issue I have with with PDI um, is is just that it's dishonest. A, a lot of the things people say is dishonest, and kind of what Panis was just talking about, like. I really have no problem with the PDI to a dollar uh, narrative as far as like a meme coin call to action. Let's do it. But like just even listening right now, like it sounds like you really don't know how die the actual stable coin die works in general. Um, and so to me, it is like a little frustrating. Although like honestly for like the, the past year, I've, I've kind of just like muted out the noise and let you guys kind of just, um, you know, have your spaces to talk about it, but there are people that do listen to you and, and get kind of pulled into this idea, you know, ideas around Richard Hart being behind PDI, um, that, you know, prog programmatically it's going to stabilize, it's in the code. And I just like, I do, I do take up issue with that. I don't think it's honest. And, um, I, I had the same issue with, rap btc copy version when people were trying to tell others that it's the same thing when it's just not i mean it's it's essentially just a you know forked version it's a, it's a prc20 it's just a, a meme coin but it can still have its own life and have its own narratives but um you know with with pdi it is unique in that the the maker dial code was copied over and there are functions that work um but as far as the stable eight uh, stabilization mechanics they don't and it's apparent because it's not stabilized if, if it worked then it would be stabilized to a dollar and it, and it doesn't and it's, and it's not just collateralization um th there are um there are uh the need for oracles which pulse chain doesn't really have i mean or nothing can when, if everything is, if everything is on chain we, we actually don't need oracles that's why right so i mean there is there's is a piece to pull in the the price of collaterals but um, yeah, yeah. So, Maker so, was fine with like seven, so for seven of, years without an oracle. Just, just FYI. So, so just to kind of like touch on the things I've heard. Um, one of the, the one of the things was of a purchase um, prior to the launch of Pulse Chain, and I've addressed this prior, but that kind of just went to the wayside. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of the AMM price fixer bot. But PI was not unique in the fact that the um, that it was purchased prior to the launch of Pulse Chain, um, and the that that pool that liquidity was brought over to PulseX. Like all all Ethereum pools uh, that occurred, so that's not unique to PDI. And so the the notion that Richard Hart is behind PDI because that occurred is just false. Um, that's not true. And so that one's kind of annoyed me. Um, another thing around the collateralization that I, I just heard you speak on, I'll go ahead and pin something to the top. I don't know if you guys remember, but a while back, you guys were kind of calling it like an inflation bug or something. Um, but there is arbitration opportunities um, by using Maker to mint DAI with Forks USDC, which isn't as stable as well. 
So you can you can mint PDI, and if the the ratios are off, there is arbit uh, arbitrage opportunities there. So um, I encourage anyone to that wants to kind of learn how that function works to read Dipcatcher's tweet that I just pinned, because um, he's basically able to arb arb that for a pretty decent profit, and that you know that continues, and that's why you know those those prices get arbed. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you have other things that you think, like, I don't think people engaging with vaults, um, minting PDI, again, it's not a, a, like, basic premise that we're discussing here is, is this a stable coin? Is it, is, that is pegged to a dollar? And the answer is no. Um, the only hope that PDI has of becoming an actual stable coin is if MakerDAO actually comes over and, and like takes it over, which I don't really think is going to happen. That's like, if you want to talk about possibilities, that's probably your only hope. But as far as like any other player, like any whale, like coming in and like providing enough collateral, the, the, that's just false. Um, and, and the other thing is like, again, I'm all for trying to send it to a dollar and it totally is possible to hit a dollar. That would be huge. And I'll, I'll, I'd congratulate you guys. But the, the, telling people that it's going to peg to a dollar because the code is is not true. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, hey, no, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for the for the maker consideration. You know, that's really not even something that I've really thought about a ton. Um, but that actually, you know, who knows, who knows. Um, but yes, a lot of these functions exist, and that's actually the beautiful part. You're actually going to put something, I think, potentially together for Panos. So the the fact that you can arb PDI and PUSDC means that they're level. If you look at the PDI to PUSDC chart, I mean, it's pretty much one-to-one. -one. It's flat, despite despite the growth. I think there's a little bit of, of arbing opportunities and, and stuff that come through every now and then still. But really, really interesting um, uh, thing that could happen. Uh, and so, so if PDI goes up, again, we have the PUSDC arb opportunity that's going to keep them together. And then with that, again, in gold key, I don't know if you know this, I would just really encourage you to follow Nine Iron Capital. If you haven't done it yet, he's the real, you know, I would say the, the, the MVP of the PDI movement. I'm really just a cheerleader, right? I, I research a little bit, but I can only handle so much. I'll be a thousand percent honest. Uh, Nine Iron has just been following wallets. He's been digging. Um, you know, I just, I would just, you know, if you want to, be up to date kind of on a, everything that's happened since you've tuned out, you know, maybe you'll learn a little bit of things or maybe you can correct some things. Who knows? I mean, we've always been, hey, the more eyes on this, the better, right? That's what we want. I understand you're busy, uh, completely understandable, but if you ever get a chance, well, we would love that. But again, and I was going to say, I don't know if you know this, somebody has donated basically $5 million into the Pulse USDC faults, which totals $2.1 billion, essentially. So to say that there are not whales donating, I mean, we have on-chain data that shows that there are whales donating. Uh, again, a lot of the funds, this is what Nine Iron has found. Here, I'll go find his post here in a little bit. He has found that, like, I don't know if you remember when all the Ave craziness happened at the very beginning of PDI, because we were following all of this early. Like, we saw all the all the stuff happen with the PRCs, but somebody bought up a ton of Ave, like, real quick, right out of the gate. And then nuked it. Like it was like, like what the heck happened? Well, come to find out, whoever did that went and drained all of the Ave vaults and then started doing stuff. And then that's where they put the USDC, the PUSDC from the Ave, they threw it into the to the Pulse Maker vaults. So again, I I have always maintained that it could be somebody else. We don't know. Uh, Richard Hart's own words said that somebody else was going to make a make a maker down replacement. So I, I am also very cautious to say that it is Richard Hart. Um, you know, I, 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 I am. Other people are not as much. Um, and, you know, it, it is, it's, it's, it's hard when you've got a big community, right? Especially with these weird conspiracies. People have said AI stuff. There's, there's a lot of stuff that people have said that I don't know why they say. But, you know, that's a, that's a community, right? So, but I do try to be truthful. Um, I... I believe that Richard Hart, or, or well, 
I believe that, you know, we've also seen some crazy stuff with deposits from, from people like a tropo, say whatever you want, but connected with, with, with PDI, really interesting, just thickening up the liquidity pools um, way early on. You know, we, we believe that something, you know, there's the unknown, right? We're the tinfoil hatters. We believe that there are things that could potentially happen. And, you know, we've had to kind of learn to understand the risk tolerance of people that have listened to you and dip catcher, right? Uh, you guys are very, very on chain, on the nose. And, and I think you guys protect your people, which I think is very honorable of you, to be 100% honest. Um, and, and, you know, sorry if we came out swinging, to be 100% honest, you know, I've had to kind of understand you guys a little bit more because I, you missed my introduction. I'm, I'm not from here. I'm from a different community and I came in here and, you know, I was I was honestly surprised by just kind of the way the way things were. Didn't really know anybody, um, but regardless, besides the point, um, you know, I, I would just say check out check out Nine Iron. But we we, you know, I, I'm going to do a better job moving forward of of just you know trying to respect people's risk tolerance, understand, and then that's the beauty about Pulse Chain. There are so many different avenues, and this is what I always just like to say. I always like to say this, no matter what. Whatever it is, instead of just pumping my own bags, your own bags, and this goes for all of us, you know, sell the ecosystem. We've got super crazy conspiracy nut jobs over here, if that's what you're into. We've got, hey, we're building super awesome tech uh, that's going to be cross-chain with Solana over here. We've got, you know, the super, like, you know, we've got the, whatever, the Tang gang over here that just makes all the crazy memes. But time, I love time. It's the first community-owned wallet, like that, where the you know owners of it get the fees. There's just so many cool things here, and so it, it hurts me when I see people assassinate character, assassinate everybody, um, especially myself, because I am truthful in my my intentions. I do think that we can see some magic with this, um, and I'm not trying to yank anybody's chain. And I do try to be honest when I'm theorizing things. And I do try to be honest when we have facts. So, you know, there, there's a difference. And, and I, try to, I try to draw that line for people. So, you know, I, I understand, you know, kind of where you're coming from. And, you know, I know you got to get going. I appreciate it. If you want to say anything else, happy to, happy to hear your thoughts. Um, but, you know, our community has, and, and the thing is, is as it's gone on, we've just found more and more and more like these, we found a vote on the pulse maker side some some whale is donating PUSDC right um if PDI goes up PUSDC goes up with it theoretically the P rat Bitcoin goes up with it does it need to peg to bat rat Bitcoin no I'm that that's a narrative again we don't need to push that but hey this is just explosive right and if that happens if there's you know these vaults that have it you know, and if you want to dig into these, you know, where that rat Bitcoin went or anything, I don't know if you even know, but th those are things that could, if you're thinking about it, if all of these are growing in tandem, huh, it's, it's not unrealistic to potentially see that we could have a, a, a fat bag in these vaults. Is it a stretch? Is it a tinfoil hat? You know, are we 100% there? Absolutely not. But we've got a lot of legs. And all I'm going to say is, is just, you know, dig into it a little bit more since, you know, you, you said you haven't been. Um, and, you know, that, that would just be my, my request to you because there's a lot of people that have been putting a lot of really good work into this. I've gotten to know them really well, and, and I do think they're honest people. So, you know, I, I just, again, it, it, it hurts me when I see, you know, those types of, that type of slander go out, um, especially when we haven't chatted uh, those types of things, and I've done it as well, right? So I'm I'm also guilty of that. So it's just it's something that uh, I'm going to work on. But that's that's you know that's just kind of where I'm coming from. So that's what that's where we're at. Yeah, and I I, I respect you, man. Um, you know, I know I know you have spent a lot of time with the community. Um, I think for me, I'm I'm just like a realist. I'm not like there's some things like when it comes to narratives, like I like truth. I like you know real things. But I do understand that there is a group of people that do like to, you know, like, you know, like the, the flat, flat earth community. There's a, a huge population of people that like spend a lot of their time focused on that one thing. And, that, you know, and, um, you know, I, I don't I don't associate with that. But I think for me, I do I do think about new people that 
um, do get exposed to narratives that, you know, I don't, I don't want to use the word dishonest, but like just things that aren't full truth or, you know, so that, that does frustrate me sometimes, but I, I do understand that, you know, obviously anytime you talk about a crypto that someone is invested in, they're going to get defensive. Um, and I, I, I do wish you guys the best. Like I, again, fully support the, uh, the PI to a dollar. Um, I, but I, I do, you know, I do want people to know it's not going to peg to a dollar based off the code. Um, again, it can hit a dollar, uh, but the, the, it's unless maker doubt, like the, again, the, the biggest hope for PDI to actually stabilize would be MakerDAO coming over and supporting it. But truthfully, I think like if they were to come to Pulse Chain, they would likely just relaunch. Um, but I don't think Pulse Chain's really earned the, our status yet to like have the attention of them. But um, but yeah, man, I, I do wish you guys the best. Uh, I you know that pull, uh, PDI to a dollar would be massive gains, and I'd love to see people win. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate you having me up. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll drop down. Okay, well, hey, real quick, I just have a question. Are you, are you still going to stick around for a sec? It's going to go? Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, what do you think about somebody donating $5 million in, into the Pulse USDC vault, vaults and, and also a vote taking place? So they, I, I, would, I would assume what they did was what I pinned at to the top, um, which isn't really donating. They wanted to get more PDI and probably if I was that person, I would be setting up a bot in order to arbitrage the price and maybe take the gains as the ratios change a bit. Um, but they didn't like, you know, you're, you're probably better off like just buying like that person is probably a lot more technical is able to make profit in a way that like most aren't. Um, if you're going to, you know, touch PDI, I would just buy it. But, um, but yeah, again, the, the maker, like the, the contracts work, obviously they, they're forked over, but they don't, they don't work as intended to, um, you know, to stabilize to a dollar there, there's, yeah. But anyways, like I, I, I get it. Like I, I do like, I, I appreciate the, the kind of, um, conspiracy theory, like it is, it is engaging and, and, um, I get that. Uh, but yeah, I, I would probably assume that they were doing what I pinned up at the top. Right on, right on. Okay, well, hey, hey, well, I mean, we'll check it out. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at it. I mean, we did see a lot of arbitraging that was going on, and, and this that all kind of stopped when, when this person was making a lot of these uh, donations. It appeared to, to end a lot of those things. Uh, and of course, you still can. There are still opportunities, but they're, they're very, very scarce now. But... Um, yeah, no, I mean, and I, I, again, appreciate you as well, Gold Key. You know, again, I know you're busy. I wish you the best of luck with Gophers. I've got some soul. You know, I'll go, I'll probably go get some at launch because I know it's going to be hype, even, you know, despite everything I said. And I think any of us that may have said something or disagree, I think it would be a good investment to just go, you know, if you got some soul, park it over there, don't sell it. That's an investment in Pulse Chain, as far as I'm concerned. Blow that thing up and show them that we do it different over here. Uh, I'm all for that. Let's make it happen. Appreciate that, man. You're, you're awesome. And, um, yeah, hope everyone, uh, I, I wish everyone much success. Uh, and thanks for having me up. Appreciate it, brother. Good luck, man. Okay. All right. Well, that was exciting. Thank you, Gold Key, once again for, for coming on up. Uh, uh that was, uh, that was, that was good. I think we had a good discussion there. And um, yeah, I think, um, again, I think we just see things differently, right? And I think that's like kind of always been the case um, that, you know, he's he's a realist, right? He's, he's you know, got to see it. And he does a lot of work on chain. And again, we, uh, we believe in um, things that can happen, the unknown, right? We said that from the very beginning. And then a couple months later, somebody made these PUSDC deposits. So... You know, who knows? Who knows how it can go? Um, and, and maybe it, who knows? And that, that tweet that Richard made about, hey, just ask them to come over. Who knows? Maybe, who knows? Maybe uh, Maker just coming over would be a, a 
a viable solution. Again, Richard Hart did say someone else was going to be uh, make Pulse Maker. Uh, Pulse Maker on Pulse is what he said, literally out of his mouth. I can go What's that? Somebody says that they're building uh, a Maker DAO replacement so that we have like die on Pulse Chain. It is. Uh, thank you. He's the uh, he's the assist man, Steve Nash. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so, but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so that's out of the cat's mouth, out of out of his mouth, right there. So who knows? Again, um, he did say to ask. Remember that one? He was like, "Hey guys, just ask nicely. Maybe we just need to be like, hey maker, look what we've got going over here. We're trying to support you guys." Um, yeah, that could be a potential avenue as well, right? Again, we we always, you know, we're open to different ideas. That was a a good idea by Gold Key. That'd be absolutely hilarious if that's absolutely what happened. So, um, if anybody else has any questions, if anybody else has anything that they want to say, uh, if they're new to to what's going on, um, you know, again, you know, happy to to answer any questions, kind of go over things a little bit more. Um, we've also got Teddy Bear. I know that he's got some fun stuff going on with uh, some announcements. I've got some fun stuff going on with Teddy Bear. We can talk about that. But I would like to at least, you know, put a bow on the PDI discussion. Um, you know, Zach, I mean, there's always the Atropa thing as well. Uh, people have met uh, 414 in real life. Um, you know, they've, they've, I've talked to these people and they, they've been part of the community very early on. They're, they're very genuine people, um, and they are giga bullish. They think that there's some, there was some sort of potential, you know, oh, we got Sunny. I'll just have Sunny speak for a little bit. Sunny, what's going on, my man? You there, Sunny? Uh-oh, we might have lost him. Zach, did you have your hand raised? Hey, what's going on, boys? Uh, here we are. Oh, hey, on, uh... So, everybody, yes, yeah, Sonny, we've got a lot of new people in here since uh, I introduced him before. Sonny is just building, like, tons of ridiculous liquidity pool stuff. Liquidity master over here. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Uh, you guys should go look him up. He's been with Corey and he chatted with uh, Coexistence before. Um, but he's building stuff for the community. There's liquidity pools and he's he's adding liquidity that's going into a lot of this copy ecosystem and he is uh, actively supporting it. Um, so I've got a lot of respect for the way he does things. He puts his heads down, gets stuff done. Vickers with nobody and and makes it happen. So what's up, man? What what you uh you requested? No, I just want to stop in and say hi. Uh, I mean, the whole P I thing kind of started a lot of our education and it could, you know a lot of things going on over here. Most of what I do is uh, just try and provide paths and code to make sure there's always a uh, some volume on charts there's always buys there's always some sort of arbitrage going on and liquidity in these tokens forever a lot of the copied ones you know, some of the from these ones um just to kind of get those pumps working and and uh, start the siphon from the from east side yeah yeah pretty cool and sunny even does stuff like with these these copies and and the and he goes into the copy Uniswap pools and buys tokens from there and adds liquidity on Pulse X. So like the code, the, the Uniswap that nobody has access to. Um, he's got ridiculous spreadsheets. But uh, I mean, he's, if you want to talk about it a little bit more, I really wouldn't even know how to explain yourself. I just, that's like, I'm, I'm very uh, <laughs> surface level on it. Uh, I mean, it's uh, what really got me, and this is the same that's true in all LPs, for the most part on pulse chain. Um, when you start a liquidity pool in a normal token, you take X amount of tokens with X amount of money, you pair it together, people trade it, right? Like you look at soul, most of their stuff, it's paired with soul or ETH, it's paired with ETH, BNB, BNB, right? So you're playing one pool. So it goes up and down a whole lot, right? When, uh, when you add, let's say you put hundred percent of the tokens in liquidity, they're all bought out and then sold back, right? So you can go way up and you can come right back to zero. What Pulse Chain did with Pulse X, and then this resonates into every PRC20 copy and every from ETH copy, right? 
nothing here started with a liquidity pool. Um, well, actually, I guess some of the copies started with a V2 uh, Uniswap pool, but the price is so small, it wouldn't even matter. But uh, when you, let's let's just, you know, in theory, say you were the very first one on Pulse and you made the Pulse, Pulse X pool, right? And you put a million Pulse and a million Pulse X, just one to one, just made the pool, right? And then a thousand people come trading Pulse for Pulse X and Pulse X for Pulse, right? Back and forth, just jumping millions and millions and millions and billions of Pulse and Pulse X into both sides, right? And no one else adds liquidity, right? Just in this scenario. Um, you know, you, your liquidity pool is now going to have like a billion Pulse and a billion Pulse X, right? So you just did 100X in liquidity. Even if the price went down 50%, you still made money. Now, the key to this is there's still shit tons of Pulse and Pulse X out there that have not seen this liquidity pool. So when you look at like the world's largest free airdrop, it truly wasn't meant for them. It wasn't meant to give them free money. It's for any of us that want to provide liquidity and let them dump it. Because if you go start, like I'll go over to Uniswap pool, I'll pull one token out and pair it with one Pulse and then buy it out of my own pool and then pair it again, and then buy it out of my own pool, and pair it again, and it literally costs more in gas, and takes a thousand transactions. But every time you do that, you're actually leverage trading, you're putting leverage on that uh, LP position. So if you start it with micro pennies, and leverage it up and get it going, you get, you know, two, three dollars in there, or whatever, and some of the free airdrops going to come and dump their tokens, right? So if I started this pool with one token, and they come and dump a million, even if they dump the price 99%, I still have a million more coins, right? So like, if that happens to be paired with three or four other tokens, they can't even dump it 99% because it'll arbitrage 60% right back in. So now they literally just gave me free money. So that's that was the basis of A1A, was to uh, be top holder on a lot of those PRC20 pools. And to this day, it still is top holder because it keeps gaining strength as it goes. So if you take those and you just tie them together, more and more and more arbitrage means that the price itself can actually move less, but more and more of the, the tokens from arbitrage that builds the LP. And then if there's a chart there, people dump their tokens. And same thing from ETH, right? Like when you bridge in from ETH, you're actually minting a token and then generally selling it for Pulse or something else, right? So you're putting it into an LP pool that's just never been in before. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's genius. If you really, if you really unpack it, and, and it took me, like, honestly, like, ten times to understand it, uh, um, it, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, and I remember when I got, I had the aha moment, I was like, oh, dude, that's, that's awesome. Uh, and it's done really, really well so far, and, and you just, you just keep on ticking with it, so, um, yeah, so essentially, basically, what he's saying is, is he can set up, you know, a lot of passive liquidity pools that, that over time, you know, really, really add up because they're strategically placed, essentially, kind of, kind of situation. So, right. So, like a lot of the A one A original pools, they all started with uh, ten dollars, and like uh, the USDC stable one. There's two of those V one V two. They probably both have about three or four grand in them now, just from doing their thing over time. No one's ever added liquidity or taken liquidity from those pools. So it's just a it's a matter of time, and those tokens just getting dumped into it. But the math's there. I mean, shit, A1A was $500 market cap at launch. It's $3 million now. With probably, I don't know. I mean, there's at least a quarter million burn liquidity in real money. And then uh, the other is like $3 million. The B2B pair is just, it's it's the same theory as a die versus a tropa, where you have that 80% or up the supplier, you know, the top holder. Same thing with A1A and B2B, just burn liquidity. You have to actually buy the token from other pools to get it to fall out of that liquidity. Like the only way we'll ever get that PDI out of the Atropa LP is to buy more Atropa so the PDI falls out. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. I, I, I got you. Uh, real quick, guys, I'm trying to find a, a post here really quick. I just want to say something. Um, but yeah, go go ahead and keep uh, keep going, Sonny. Uh, Zach, if you, want, if you want to chime in on what's going on with the Tropa, Zach, you're more than welcome. Panos, you got questions? I mean, op open table. Feel free. I'll be right back. I just wanted to 
you know, just remind everyone, you know, the whole purpose of the subtropic ecosystem is to, you know, make sure that these pea stables basically can get up to a dollar and stay there, right? That's, um, that's basically what the 414 developer has been saying this entire time. Um, so, like, I, I understand that there's a lot of different mechanisms to, to making you know, die a stable coin. Um, you know, we have like these maker vaults that are being collateralized. Um, <clears throat> we have somebody making a front end, right, for these maker vaults for people to interact with later on. Um, and then we also have the whole tropic ecosystem, right? So these are a myriad of different things. And when Richard spoke on video and said that, you know, we're, we'll have a maker DAO replacement on Pulse Chain. I mean, obviously we're speculating, but it, this is just, it sounds to me like that that's what we're looking at here. So, so do you think Atropa is going to be the maker replacement? I mean, I'm not going to say yes or no, um, but Richard said that there would be a maker DAO replacement so we can have die on Pulse Chain. So it's just, it just seems like that because Maria, in, you know, the, the dev has been just speaking the, the entire time about uh, the Atropa ecosystem was made to basically create these stable coins here on Pulse Chain or make sure, make sure that they're stable. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I you know, I've, um, I, I've, I've heard other things as well. You know, I think my, my, where I'm at with that is they, they know each other. There's a reason there was so much, you know, money deposited into that, and I think it could be a mutually beneficial agreement, right? Doesn't necessarily have to be directly related, but they can both uh, potentially ride the wave together, and, and, you know, that fat stack of liquidity that's in there is. Uh, I mean, nobody can deny that that's beneficial. That was one of the things that we had, but I don't know if it's directly. Like, I've, I've never said that. Well, I mean, it did, I haven't since like early days. I haven't said that in a while. Yeah, the Atropa developer has been an early, early, early OG hex whale, right? So, I mean, they they were they were there from the very beginning. Um, you know, whether they know Richard or not, you know, it's who knows, right? But um, it it just it seems like. You know, this has obviously been planned for a long time, right? Atropa was on testnet since the very beginning, uh, back in 2021, I think. Um, yeah, so it's, it's all just uh, a pretty big speculation, but it just the puzzles are just the puzzle pieces are kind of fitting together more and more as we go on. Right. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And again, for those who don't know, I mean, I put this up there. You know, somebody has donated a ton of money into these pulse vaults. You know, not normal transactions. These are deposits, um, and there was a series of a ton of them in September. Uh, and again, we are, you know, speculating that somebody's gearing up for something, right? There's a lot more PUSDC in there than there are USDC, total of about five million dollars. I mean, that that's a whale, right? Like that's that some somebody's doing something something crazy. I mean, it could be what. Um, gold key said um but since that's happened there has not been that many arbitrage functions because that that actual the deposits what that did is that basically maxed out the the arbitrage you can no longer arbitrage because there's there's too much usdc in there essentially so um it, it's just interesting to kind of kind of the way that that happened um but again it does work at times depending on the prices of both of them right so we do see it come in every now and then so i mean i believe that somebody benevolent because i don't i i don't fully understand how somebody could really take advantage of that unless i mean we haven't seen it yet but they haven't taken advantage of it um for what it's been the, the deposit started in september and i believe they ended in november so they went on for like a long time. You can go to the to, to the wallet that I have, uh, that I just post up there, and uh, and you can see. You can just go to the poll side, and, and then you can see what's going on. Um, and so then, you know, that's you know, make your own decisions on that. But this is the data that we found that we have uh, has have we believe makes our case very bullish. Hell yeah, man! This has uh, been a good space so far. I, um, I don't know if there's anybody else in the community that wants to come up and speak, but anybody's definitely welcome to share any opinions or ideas. Yeah, definitely, Panos. You've been quiet for a little while. Have uh, what are your, what are your thoughts with everything? Still the same? 
Yeah, my, my, my thoughts haven't changed. Like I said, I'm, <clears throat> I'm fully for the, the narrative, P die to a dollar. Um, I think it's, you know, it, it, it's a possibility. It can happen. I've seen, I've been in crypto long enough to see meme coins do crazy numbers. Um, I think it could go past the dollar if, if enough people um, pile into, into this narrative. But I, I, I remain, um, you know, I, 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 I have the same thoughts as Gold Key when it comes to the actual stabilization of the PDI to a dollar or any of, of these uh, copy stables to a dollar. There's just, it just, it, it as it, as it exists right now, it can't work. Um, and I don't believe that Maker would ever come over um, to Pulse Chain and build something because, like, we're such a small, um, we're, still, we're a blip on the on the map compared to other blockchains like Ethereum and Solana at the moment. I mean, obviously, we're still young and early, um, but I don't think that Maker would look at Pulse Chain and think, let's go build over there. Um, I just don't think it's realistic. So I still remain in the same thought that PDI can go to a dollar, PDI could go beyond a dollar, but the collateralization and the stabilization of it, um, I just don't believe is, is, is a possibility. Right. Right. And Hey, that's fair. I mean, and I appreciate the honesty and I mean, that's, that's fair, a fair assessment. A lot of people have said that for a long time and Hey, that's, that's a, that's fine. Right. We, we've always maintained that we do need more information. We do need to see more things in order for our theory to be a hundred percent true. Right. So, I, I mean, I think that we're, 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 we're similar, right? I think it's just a different risk tolerance, right? And it's, and it's, it's, um, and you know, but it's, it's just different, but let's go what you got, what you got, Zach. Oh, nothing. I was actually just going to agree with Panos. You know, as it stands right now, it doesn't work, right? So we're, we're you know, obviously it's not a dollar, right? It's the code's not working. None of it's working, right? And uh, the collateralization doesn't work. Uh, but I'm just of the mindset that it's not impossible, right? So to be able to say that it can't happen, um, I mean, it's 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 just pretty wild to be able to to make such a 100% um, convicted you know, mindset on that. Um, I, I'm, I'm just more of the belief that like, I don't, I don't know everything. I don't want to ever think that I, uh, can say this or that, you know, when I really, um, am not like the most knowledgeable person to be speaking on those things. So I like to just try to keep an open mind and you know, we're not telling anybody to go sell their house and invest their money into this. Like, uh, it's some, you know, real, um, real investment. It, it's just a speculation that we're all kind of, uh, building upon. Yeah, no, nothing's impossible. Um, it sh it, uh, I shouldn't say it, it could never happen. It's just pro probability-wise. It's very low probability that it could collateralize. But at the end of the day, listen, I, I'm rooting for p -Di, I'm rooting for a tropa. Like, I'm, I'm in this ecosystem. I, I'm, you know, I'm invested in many different projects. And I, I want to see all of them win. Um, I, you know, I didn't come on this space to, to bash p -Di or... Or anything like that. I just wanted to voice my opinion on ju just the stabilization and collateralization part of it all. Um, but listen, I I've got to go. I I I've got things I need to do. But thanks for having me up. And yeah, man, like P die to a dollar, man. I'm I'm rooting for it. I'm holding it. And um, yeah, good luck to everybody. Yes, sir. P die to a dollar. That that's right. Yeah, we can agree on that. Let's uh, let's come together where we can. And again, appreciate the support and you tapping in. And yeah, man, get get on with your life and appreciate the honest thoughts and uh, being a good, valuable member of the community. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, notes. Yep. See ya. So, well, I wanted to ask him a question, um, but it's all good. He's got to get going. I mean, I guess my thing, right, is it's it's you know a lot of the people think that Richard Hart is just going to. Uh, you know, buy the tokens, right? Again, we should all have really no expectations. I mean, that's what he told us. But I think a lot of people are like, oh yeah, he's just going to buy his main tokens with with his his sack funds, right? Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. I mean, but in our our opinion has always been that's kind of kindergarten. Um, you know, we think that a much better use would be to potentially collateralize a wholly different stablecoin. 
that uses all of those coins to potentially back it, right? And and those types of things. Well, um, you know, so it, it's just it's interesting that the people who think that Richard Hart is just going to buy up all of the tokens don't think that Richard Hart could recollateralize and donate a very small portion of that into these pulse maker vaults to make it happen. Um, I mean, that, that to me is fairly realistic. Again, I wish he, he would have stayed so he, he could have answered that. Um, but I, I don't know if I'm crazy for thinking that. But uh, that, that to me just seems very realistic. But we got a new uh, speaker up here, uh, Mr. Dr. Matthew Scott. How are you, doctor? Hey, guys, I'm doing really well. Listen to the, the whole space. And um, I've been following Nine Iron and Zach for a while now and uh, trying to fill in the blanks in my mind of what what we're seeing happen and uh with really great projects that uh nobody's ever thought of before most of the time the founder is or the the team or whoever it is the the bright minds that are starting it they start with the why and the why of this is that it, it doesn't exist anywhere else and i've not known rh to do something or copy something that he doesn't think would be better than what already exists. So while we don't, nobody knows, like Panos' questions are great. They're great questions. Like, how's this? I, I just don't see it. Of course we don't see it. Nobody's seen it. RH is the only one that had this idea for a stable coin. And I, it feels a lot like he does have a relationship with Maria or has had some influence on their plan. But it seems a lot like the Atropa system is uh, more or less building a system that's never been done before in order to be used to stabilize PDI at some point. And it's not in the code now because it's never been done before. Nobody's ever seen it. With all great innovation, we've seen something that is all these different uh, generations of technology put together to create this breakthrough. And so it's this generational buildup until you have this amazing new thing. A stable coin on a copy chain that isn't backed by some other person that's backed by code seems very RH. And we don't know what it is, and we can't explain what it is, because nobody knows. It's just this, this developer has a game plan. It seems to be working. So if you go back to the why, why Atropa? I think that the Atropa ecosystem is using different liquidity pools to be able to eventually stabilize PDI in a way we've never seen. And so like, while nobody sees, oh, well, they're going to do it this way, they're going to do it that way. No, they're not. We don't know. But why would you start Atropa if you didn't have a purpose for it? Why have PDI if you're not going to use Atropa for it? So I'm, I'm excited to see it, and I, I appreciate all the skepticism and the questions and everything that everybody has about it, but man, it really seems like there's just going to be this boom moment, and RH is going to be like, maybe he's not a part of it, who knows? But it really seems like there's a why here that we haven't been able to explain. Yeah, yeah, well said. I mean, thank you, thank you for saying that. Uh, absolutely, it's um, we, we have no idea. We've seen a lot of crazy things happen already on the back backside. We call it the pulse chain dark web. For those of you guys who haven't heard it, it's just weird stuff goes on in the background. No, like it's just, and then it's lots of liquidity stuff is going on, and nobody's really talking about it. These devs that are doing it. Uh, Maria has come out recently with her chat log and, and her chat room, but with the beginning for the first couple of months, like just doing crazy stuff, no marketing, just pairing stuff up, never said anything to anybody, mm -hmm. donated like a million dollars to a burnt liquidity pool on V1. Like what the heck is going on? So, I mean, yeah, we, again, we, it, it's been wild. And again, for me as the, as the tinfoil hat guy, I mean, it's just like crack. I absolutely love this stuff. So um you know but you all know that right know that about me that i'm the tinfoil hat guy right you know if you want a little bit more of the facts go to nine iron capital uh sunny has very rational takes 
um, Matthew here seems to be very rational about what's going on. Uh, so, you know, everybody's great. Uh, Mewtwo's done really, really good work as well. Uh, he's down there in the, in the comments. If he wants to come speak as well, he was critical, critical early on. I think he was like the first one that found the weird stuff with PETA, if I'm not mistaken. I think he was like, it was 9-iron, but he wasn't in our group. So, but then, then yeah, you, you two kind of led the charge. Um, but yeah, thank you, Matthew. I mean, that was that was good. Did you have anything else that you wanted to say, or was was that it? No, I uh, just uh, you know listening to the space. There was when when Gold Key was on. I was waiting for somebody to start firing out what Nine Iron had laid out and. Uh, it's a bummer he wasn't here. I, I get it. Don't, don't want to jump in on the space and stuff, but the stuff that he posts is like, wow, that's pretty hard Hard to see that not working out, but still the why. And um, we, do, we don't know. And I've heard Gold Key vary with a lot of conviction on things, and then two weeks later something else comes out, and it's like, ooh, got him. He was a little off there. And that's fine because he does – you know, you have to be convicted in the things you're doing, but just because you're sure of something now doesn't mean that it's, it can't happen. So, um, to me, I look at, well, why would he do all this? Why would they go through this whole entire thing and not have a plan to peg it? It seems like a giant waste of time or the greatest scam ever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's kind of, kind of always been my thing. And again, I, I can't think of a better way to market this chain than to do that. And it's then, then after that, you've got everything. You've got P Wrapped AVAX, you've got P Crow, you've got P She, P Doge, I mean P Wrapped Bitcoin. I mean it's endless. And it's yeah. like you guys like you know, and that's it's it's been in the way I see it, regardless of P Dai. This is a golden goose for Pulse Chain. It, like, who cares about PDI? The copies. 100%. I didn't even need yeah. PDI to think yeah. this was a golden goose, to be 100% honest. I was like, oh, this is super hype. Like, and then ev and everybody I talked to about it loves it. They're like, whoa, that's like super cool. Like, I can go by, like, be like, yeah. And it's like, yeah, like, you can be like early. The community's adding liquidity. They're pumping it up. And they like get excited. So we've been recruiting and talking to people and they love it. And then we just hear the greater community and like, oh, we're having a hard time. Like, we should do this. We should do that. And it's like, we've been trying to like sound the trumpets as loud as we can. Like, yo, this works, right? Like, this works. If you want to get people on the chain, like Pulse X, Pulse Inc. I knew about those when I came here, but that's not why I came here. I came here for the pump and dump, right? Straight up. I stayed for the copies. I think that that's how, you know, the bigger tokens, and yes, there are some amazing things about Pulse and Pulse X, but I don't think that's what DGENs really, really like. I mean, let's just be honest. Look at what's going on with Solana. I think we can all agree that we want those people here. They're into, like, their, their, their brain works a little bit differently uh, from the big stuff. They kind of want the stupid stuff, the stuff that you would never think works. Uh, and we have that <laughs> like, we freaking have that here and so i'm just saying and that's why I, I said this to gold key as well you know let's not just pump our own bags let's talk about this super crazy ecosystem over here because you know that's the beauty of what we have is if we widen the scope for everybody we can let other people pick what they want and there's literally something for everybody here there's not something for everybody on solana right there's i mean like but there is something for everybody i wouldn't even say there's something for everybody on ETH. but i genuinely think if you widen the scope big enough for people and you paint a picture of like layer one brand new super crazy hype copy ecosystem early bitcoin billionaire holder that hasn't spent any money to market any of this like it's, it's that simple it's literally that simple um and and you know and, and highlight some of the other stuff too as well and talk about hex and the history and all of those things there's so many things that we can do but I, I think the crux of it is the the new exciting thing that nobody's ever seen before i think that's what people want so um we had kevin uh, oh matthew uh, he was disconnected there but if you want to chime in on anything else but we had kevin come up uh what's going on mr kevin hey man thanks for uh inviting me on to speak right now but uh i i was i wanted to hear uh, more of the debate but i was too late for that i just heard the very end but uh i heard you guys just saying that 
you didn't get a chance to get to the nine iron capital post. And I, I just remember that that was so crazy. Uh, I don't really understand it cause I haven't like read it like very closely yet because I'm just not like that, you know, that tech savvy or whatever, but I can post it now if you want in the, in the chat or the, what's it called? The, uh, which one is it? It's the main one that, uh, well, it's the one that Nine Iron Capital pinned to the top of his page that has like the detailed, uh, yeah, post it, post it. Uh, I mean, yeah, go, go ahead and post it for sure. Wait, hold on. Uh, I posted the most recent one. No, I didn't post the most recent one. I'm tripping. Um, I don't know how I've never posted in the Jumbotron before. I'm trying to do it right now, but it's not really going, or maybe it's about to go. Um, but anyway, there's another thing too that I noticed. Um, oh, okay. My post was sent. Um, but there's another, th yeah, there's another, th there's another thing that I noticed, um, about PDI when I, and I, I haven't confirmed this detail, but, uh, or no, I'll just say it. So if you, if you look at PDI in the block explorer, the pulse chain block explorer, they have the logo. Um, and a lot of other coins have the logo too. Um, like, Tron has a logo, uh, Tether has a logo, obviously PulseX, Pulse, Inc, Hex, both Hexes have a logo, um, I, I think Die from Ethereum has a logo as well, but what's cool about the Tether logo and the, and the Die logo on the Pulse blockchain explorer is that they have the little Pulse colors around them in the logo, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, that was really interesting. Uh, a little bit of devil advocate. I'll be honest. That was one of the things that got us going was the logos and the colors. I don't see the, the nine iron post. I'll get it up here in a second. And that could have been what it was for. We always have kind of thought Richard Hart has been giving us signals. Some of his tweets have lit fire onto the ideas. Like his tweets were things that were starting to get us back and forth in our little conspiracy, you know, chat. And we didn't know what it meant. But we just kind of like put it together over time. But one of the things that we, we always thought was interesting was that he, he did give some of the copies a logo. And that is bullish, um, or could, could be bullish, but he also could have done it to uh, protect people. So people didn't get wrecked and trade the wrong die or whatever, right? So that um, is a potential option, right? So we can't say, we can't say it was on to be you know, honest and, and you know, intellectually honest with that. Yeah, he. I think that that's that's not the case, though. I think if he just left the copied die, right, the P die, if he didn't want people to get wrecked and buy that instead, he could have just given it no logo at all, just like all the other tokens, and just only given the regular die logo to die from Ethereum. I think that would make most sense. I mean, yeah, that makes sense to me as well. <laughs> I mean, they gave, he gave he gave logos to important tokens, right? That's what that's what I think. I'm getting the nine iron post here. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know why I didn't post this. Yeah, the nine iron um, post. I think uh, if I go to his page, it's uh, it's the top. It's pinned on the top of his page, but I can't. But for some reason, it's not letting me post it in the jumbotron. It has 585 likes. Yeah, for sure. Criminally underrated, if you ask me. And then he's got this post as well. He's got a lot. He, he has discovered that a person who had access to the chain before anybody else was the person, you know, has moved and done a lot of crazy stuff with Piave, P-Curve. And then deposited a lot of those funds into uh, P or the Pulse Maker vaults. So those are all in there. All the two transactions that I just posted up there. Y'all can go dig in there, see what you think. I mean, they've been up for a while, um, but there's just some really, really interesting stuff going on there. Um, again, you know, why would somebody? Who knows why somebody would do this? Uh, the, you know, again, 
it's just interesting. But then again, we've been, he did have the logo of PDI at the very beginning, which again, now that Zach, you know, explains it that way, it does make sense that there's something going on with these tokens that that's why they're there. And we always theorize that. And this is me, like, this is me coming into the community, believing that Richard Hart is a 5d chess player. Cause y'all told me to, to believe that. Cause that's what he does. And then nobody is believing he's playing 5d chess. I'm like, what type of twilight zone am I going on in here? Like I'm doing what you guys are telling me to do. Like, and, and then y'all are getting mad at me for it. So, um, I don't know. It, it's it's maybe I'm misinterpreting things. I don't know, but it's just kind of it's funny funny how things have played out. Um, but yeah, yeah. Thank you for for reminding me to do that and, and bringing all that up, Kevin. Um, we've also got Pulse Chain OG in the house. How are you, sir? What's going on, gents? Um, I actually came up here to mention the the uh, the logo thing as well. Um, I agree with Zach that. If they wouldn't have wasted time on a logo. If it had no logo, I would think that would be more of a reason not to buy it, right? It's like, oh, it's not legitimate. Um, I also thought it was interesting. If a trope does have any relevancy to the pegging of die, which I think it may, why didn't Teddy Bear get a logo from Pulsex? That, to me, is suspicious. Again, tinfoil hat, but so many tokens got logos recently. And yeah, but did you see which ones got logos? Yeah, like there's there's a ton of projects on there that probably shouldn't have received a logo. Um, so I'm I'm pretty sure that there's some people that work together to get a group of people's logos added on there, and some were just left out on purpose. Because actually, you can go to so in the Pulse Chain Dev Telegram, you can actually go and apply to get your logo on there. So we just actually applied to get the PRS and the BTR logo um, on PulseX. So that should be happening soon. Okay. So I don't even think Maria's made a logo, to be honest. No, she. That's every, all. All this stuff is community made so far. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll work. we we'll work on this. We will work on that. I mean, would this be a good time to chat about Teddy Teddy Gear? Yeah, so I, I just want to let you know how you guys can go apply. Um, I'll have uh, Less Banking send you the application, but basically you can apply to get Teddy's logo on PulseX. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I figured it was something something chill like that. I thought I thought that's kind of how, how it was. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, we, we can do that. I don't know if we want to do the Teddy Gear logo. Um, I think maybe, we'll, we'll see. Maybe we can, we can kind of vote on that and see how that's going. But Teddy Gear is kind of a side project that just supports it, but it's going to be like heavily supporting it. So, um, you know, we, we can chat about it if you guys want to. I mean, is now, uh, I think, does anybody have anything else they want to say about PDI before we, you know, get into that? Now it's the fluff, right? Now we're, now we're into the fluff. All right. Let's get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to hear what you guys have been doing. Okay. Uh, yes. So anyways, I, I, I was the story with Teddy Bear, right? This all happened with the Atropa Madness. The, whoever was doing Atropa was definitely listening to us when we found all of this stuff. They started pairing up all these pools together. You could only get them weird ways. If you didn't know about it, I mean, the auto router wasn't available on the decks. So like if legal was paired with down, you had to have down to get legal. So you, you, it was weird. It was like this race to get all the tokens. So whatever new came out, and it, you know, you could you could get it. And anyways, I, I like got into Teddy Bear, right? Like I, I luckily got into Teddy Bear ridiculously early. Created the liquidity pools, uh, and as an early holder who also showed the crap out of it, right? Like I had no intention of it getting this big. To be honest, like I had no. I was just like I'm still like a little pleb. But when this happened, I'm like like had no idea what I was getting into. But now I have gotten so many people into Teddy Bear, right? And I just have a, a you know, and it's done so well. I've got a duty to, to try to do what I can to support it, right? And so what I'm doing is I am creating a uh, clothing brand called Teddy Gear. And I'll go find the logo here. But it's going to basically be an NFT style clothing brand. And everything is going to be uh, limited edition. It's not. We may do a little bit of streetwear, where 
but it's going to be, uh, you know, a little bit more subtle. It's not going to be like in your face, you know, just much more kind of a relaxed brand, something that honestly like crypto DJs would want to wear, like while they're DJing and just kind of like out and about very, very comfortable clothes, not like your typical cheap stuff that you're going to be getting. It's going to be nice, but they're also going to be NFTs. They're going to be sold and minted as NFTs. Uh, and then you can burn the NFT to claim the item. Uh, and we've got shipping and handling worked out. We've got a couple of vendors worked out. Uh, the, pretty much the whole supply chain is ready to go. Uh, we're just, it's, you know, we're just submitting everything now to get everything going. Uh, you know, we're going to make them nice. We're even going to have a back end market to where we want to have the clothes have a, a resale market. That's going to be a little bit later on down the line. Um, but you know, the clothes are going to come in like, for example, a, a breakaway package. So you could potentially, even after you burn the NFT, keep the item in the box un unopened and you still have potentially a valuable item. Again, you know, I don't want to necessarily sell you know, the expectation, but this is just kind of what we're doing. We wanted to potentially, Hey, if you're going to be burning an NFT, is there a potential way to maybe bring that into the real world? financially and also just with clothes right uh so we're excited about that uh and then basically what is it going to be yeah 90 percent of the profits are going to be going to buy and burning the token i think that's what it was 90 percent uh buying burning the token buying and burning liquidity right i'm gonna i'm gonna be very transparent about the costs of everything uh and um but yeah i'm gonna keep basically just 10 percent of the profits just so that way we can keep growing it but like 90 percent of it is going to be going into the liquidity and then buying and burning the token uh so i mean i do view it as like a community owned clothing brand and 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 teddy is really you know the 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 ownership piece right if you own teddy you kind of have a piece in this clothing brand because 90% of, of what we're doing is, is going to be thrown into to over there. So we're excited. I mean, we can, it's something that if it's successful, we can continue it going. Um, and, you know, that's kind of kind of the game plan. So we got the things are moving. And I mean, I would imagine we should be able to launch maybe a month, month and a half. So uh, it's, uh, we've been working on it for a while too. I would say, I mean, Zach's kind of, you know, got the spin on, on some logos and stuff that we've done. Uh, but yeah, here's the post. I'm going to go ahead and just post this right here. Ponzi schemes suck, right? So I just had a moral duty to turn this into no longer a Ponzi scheme, right? And I hope I think Maria has some plans, uh, and I think she does. But regardless, I took it into my own hands. So, uh, so yeah, check it out, guys. I hope you guys like the logo. But imagine just like this logo on a T-shirt or a polo. And we'll do other stuff, um, but just like a polo. And it's just going to be really subtle, really nice, comfortable golf clothes, long sleeves, you know, during the winter. And it'll just be there. Sometimes it'll be in black. Sometimes it'll be, you know, like really, really, really subtle. We'll do different things. We're going to do caps. We've also got uh, Wild Meat. He's one of our community members. He's agreed to help us with some of the designs. His wife is a clothing designer. Uh, so just want to try to get the community involved as well. So if anybody knows anything about that, happy to do it. Uh, and then we've also got created by Julio. He's got another kind of just a little bit more of a, you know, regular clothing brand that he's launching. And he's the, uh, you know, he runs the Teddy Bear page. So I'll give him a shout out. He was up here earlier. I know he wanted to speak about it. Um, but I think it's launching here soon. I need to find his page. Teddy Bear. KRC. Anyways. Anyways, that's what we got going on with that. Happy to answer any questions about that as well. And yeah, here's his post as well. So his is going to be just like more of a store, a fiat-based store. And it's going, you know, it's not going to have the NFT aspect, no minting, none of that type of stuff. Uh, so we're excited. Oh, the other thing for our store, um, it's going to look like Shopify. So you're going to be minting NFTs, but it's going to look exactly like a Shopify store. It's going to be really, really... Uh, um, We've been really thoughtful about the design and, and how we want to do it. It's not going to be your normal NFT minting experience. We wanted to make it easy for normies because one of the things that we plan on doing in the future is actually allowing credit card payments, which is a way to actually onboard funds from entirely off-chain, entirely something unrelated, onto the chain. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing with that. Um, I, we were originally going to use the Teddy 
their marketing funds. But uh, it just got a little bit confusing with taxes and things, and I was putting in a lot of time into it. So it, it, I just decided for the most part to take care of pretty much all the expenses on my own, uh, and I'm just really just taking 10% on the back end. So um, it just, and then we still have about like 70K of teddy bear on the back end that we can use to market. So um, yeah, I'm super excited to tell you guys about that. I can't wait to show you guys like what we're working on. Uh, I'm gonna actually be getting the swatch probably next week, like the little, the little one of the little things, and I'll take a picture of that. It'll be fun. Um, but yeah, happy to answer any questions about that as well. So y'all aren't ready for Teddy Bear? It's gonna be lit. It's gonna be lit. Yeah, man, this uh, this that place sounds awesome. Um, being able to bring in like a real world utility to a meme coin, right? So just like imagine if like sheep or doge you know had done this in the past you know that i mean it, it probably would have you know gone even crazier than it did um i know that like uh there was that one thing that the uniswap did the unisox or something like that i know those went for like they had like some on chain they actually made the socks on chain though that was like you could trade it <laughs> but we're doing like you guys yeah, are doing I know, but they stupid stuff. obnoxious were they ridiculous like nobody's gonna wear that besides like uniswap fucking stands <laughs> yeah, but they were selling for like three thousand dollars for a pair of socks or something. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, so I wanted to make this a little bit more universal. It is going to be like crypto degen because it's comfortable. But I, I, you know, again, we'll have some streetwear stuff that comes out. That's more Julio's thing. Julio is a little bit more of the streetwear guy. Um, but you know, I wanted ours to be just a little bit more universal. And again, who knows what that even means to be honest, we're just going to kind of do whatever. Um, but I, I, what I mean by that is I want what we are producing something that normies would buy. You could give a rat's ass about pulse chain. You could give a rat's ass about teddy bear, but you like the clothing brand. So you want to, you want to get in on that. So that was kind of my thought. Um, and uh, you know, it's a fluid thing. I mean, I, I, you know, it's, that's hopefully it goes perfect, you know, and we just launch and it gets lit and we start, we start doing stuff. But I mean, yeah, we even have a shipping and handler, like who's going to be boxing up everything for us. Um, it's, it's exciting. And in the future, we actually plan on like numbering each clothing item. That's not going to be on V1, but uh, in the future, we'll be able to do that. So each clothing item will be individual. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exciting stuff, man, that's for sure. We got a lot of cool stuff going on on Pulse Chain. We just need to let the masses know about it. That's all. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So I got to get going here pretty soon. It's late, and I got to get up early, and I'm tired. But I'm happy to answer any questions about PDI or Teddy Bear, Teddy Gear. If anybody has any more, I'm not like in that big of a rush, but I would like to start wrapping it up. So if anybody wants to come speak, has any questions, please let me know. Oh, and by the way, the Teddy Gear profit model and like the whole thing, it's going to be like algorithmic, right? Like I'm not, you know, it's good. You buy it. It's going to, the wallets are going to be split automatically. And like, so as soon as somebody buys something, it's going to be like, Doop, Teddy Bear gets bought and like, you know, it does the thing. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't want to control any of that. So just FYI, all I'm going to do is like plug in the profit margins, margins per item. So, um, for, pretty exciting. So anyways. Sounds like DeFi to me. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It is going to be fun. So, um, but yeah, guys, you know, and I'll just, you know, I guess I'll wrap it up. If again, if anyone wants to come on up, come on up. But, um, you know, I think just, you know, let's just be friends. You know, I, should, I wish I had the, the the song. Why can't why can't we be friends? Zach, do you have that? Can we just end on that? Yeah, no, no problem. I can. Yeah, let's just end, let's just end on that, and let's just let's just all marinate on that as we leave. And I think that we should, like, I think we also just need to understand, like, everyone calling everyone a scammer, like, A, it's worn off, nobody cares anymore, it's just ridiculous. And then B, it, like, it just makes us look terrible, like, nobody's going to want to come here. And then, also, if it happens, amplifying those messages by just even responding. Okay.